craw imitation baits. There's nine million of them. Every brand makes some form of soft plastic crawfish, but what are the best ones to use? Today, we're gonna break down, in my opinion, these are five crawfish imitating soft plastics that everybody should have in their arsenal. So, if you wanna join me, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. What's up guys, I am Ben with the Hook of Tackle, the Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined by my buddy at Desert Bassin, CJ in real life. That's my name, hello, right. hello, how's it going? What is up guy? <laughs> so today we are gonna to talk about soft plastic crawfish imitators, right? There are nine million different possibilities in this category, right? Everybody makes some form of crawdad type bait. And for good reason, it is probably the number one consistent forage across the world for bass, right? So, you know, some places you guys live, they're eating gobies. In some places they're eating shad. In some places they're eating shiners. In some places they're eating herring. Like the bait fish in different bodies of water changes, you know, regionally and logistically as we move throughout the country. But one consistent that's in almost every body of water where a bass lives is a crawdad. And even places where they don't have crawdads, a, cr a good crawdad imitation, it just drives bass crazy. And it's just a great way to catch them. And this is a, a style of bait that's been around forever and will be around forever, right? So, you know, a lot of options again in this category, so it can get relatively confusing and on any given day, most of them will probably work. But we tend to break this down into a few different baits and a few different riggings that when I know the fish are really keyed in on crawdad, these are great options. And so CJ and I kind of chose our five favorites to mimic a crawdad, but also to do things maybe a little differently than what everybody else is doing. Because at the end of the day, can you just take a jig and put a, uh, some kind of trailer on there and look like a crawdad? Yes, I think you can, right? And most of the time that may be the only thing you need. But sometimes it's really fun to just do things slightly different and give them a little bit different look that they're not seeing from everybody else and maybe we can catch a few more fish and maybe we can have more fun, right? Because that's mm -hmm. what it's about is having a good time, right? So. Let's dive in and let's start with a crawl that we talk about a lot here. This is one that's always in my boat. It's always in my bag when I'm shore fishing. <clears throat> this is always on me. This is the OSP Dole Live Crawl. For me, when I need a bait that is a crawfish imitation that looks like a crawfish and that kind of acts like a crawfish and I just need that crawfish profile, this one's really hard to beat. Right? So, I mean, I could take this bait out of the bag and there's no mistaking that that's a crawfish, right? It's got the profile, it's got the two claws, it's got the tentacles, it's got the legs on the side. What's great about a doe live crawl is, and we've mentioned this before, if it says doe live on it, they're gonna eat the thing, right? It's the flavor, it's the scent, it's the way it moves, right? It's just a tremendous soft plastic, whether it's in a crawl, you know, beaver or crawler or whatever. What's nice about the Dole Life Craw is that it's a subtle bait that has a very streamlined body, just a very simple body. It's got little legs where it needs to have legs to just have just a subtle amount of quiver. Uh, and then these claws are built in a way to where they trap air and they will stand up 
naturally and they will move naturally, but then they will fall naturally as well, right? So in my experience, I don't want a crawfish to be like perfectly like upright, right? Like I'm gonna attack you, right? But you see a lot of photos and videos of like a bass looking at a crawfish and the crawfish is sitting there like, oh, I'm gonna get you, right? And you know, sometimes the bass is like, oh, yeah, I'm just gonna eat you, right? But a lot of times, you know, when bass are eating crawfish, they're eating them from behind. You know, things kind of moving around. It's much easier for a bass to eat it from behind as it's just naturally crawling on the bottom versus, you know, having a stare off and those claws raising up and, you know, going that route, mm -hmm. right? So what's nice about the dull life craw is that it has enough action without being too aggressive in action it's just a it's a subtle movement but still providing some movement it's not like a, a rage craw type arm that's just kind of a crazy flap it's just kind of a real subtle kind of fall with those claws and it lays down in a nice way it's available in a three inch a four inch and a five inch which is also nice because i could take this four inch size and i can texas rig it i can free rig it i can put it back on the back of a full size jig or i could take the size that i throw most often which is a three inch and I can use it as a little jig trailer, right? So, you know, we talk about these little jigs all the time, the headlock jig by Depths, the OSP Hunts jig, right? The three inch dough life crawl is a perfect trailer for those two. It fits on the back perfectly. In fact, let me just rig one real quick. So these are the two little uh, finesse jigs that I use the most, the Hunts and the headlock. Uh, basically what it comes down to for me is if there's no wood anywhere, I like to go with the headlock because there's no weed guard in the way. So, you know, when you get bit, it just hooks them perfectly. But if there's any type of wood that you potentially could snag on, I go to the hunts. And just because that little weed guard keeps it out from getting snagged like crazy. So that's kind of what I use to determine which one to use. Okay, come the on. The ultimate battle. Stupid red thing. It's 2022 and we're still putting stupid red things <laughs> no. on the hooks. We haven't figured out a better way to get these stupid, oh. There's nothing worse than when you're on a good bite and you know they're chewing down there and you're sitting there for five minutes trying to get that little red thing off the tip oh, of the hook. Fucker. All right, I'm just gonna leave the rest of that little red thing on. <laughs> just fish it with it on there. Yeah. <laughs> now it's just a it's just a stop. They get they get a little red thing yeah. on the hook. Bleeding craw. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Now typically if you guys are gonna do a jig and crawl combo, uh, generally speaking, I try to keep my jigs very simple. I generally tend to go with just like a green pumpkin jig or a black jig, uh, a brown jig. I try to not worry so much about flake and that kind of stuff. Sometimes it makes a huge difference, right? So if you live in a place where you know it's got to have this flake or that look, then obviously do that. But by staying simple, like this is a green pumpkin jig, I can add color and flake with my craw. So I could have three or four different colors of craw. I could have something with red flake, like this is a green pumpkin pink red flake. I could do a green pumpkin blue flake. I could do just a straight green pumpkin. I could do a watermelon. I could do uh, a tan, right? And I can mix and match and find the right combo that they need. But there you go. So it's just a perfect little bite size morsel for those fish. It's really next to impossible for a fish to resist this, especially if they're brown. If it's a smallmouth bass, they're eating this thing, mm -hmm. if it's brown, right? So just a great, great crawfish imitator. That's the OSP Dole Live Craw. So that's number one on my list. I was never a big fan of craw baits that had that kind of claw on them. Yeah. Until I saw that one, how much action it has with that claw. Yeah. It's crazy with that shape, how, how much it still kicks. I I like my bait to have action. We have a tendency as, as an industry to put action in everything. We want everything to swim and move and have a lot of different movement to it, right? And there are times when having a bunch of movement is, is a triggering mechanism for them. But sure. when you look at nature and you look at how a bait fish swims, how a crawfish moves, you know, nothing is moving like this very often, right? It's usually short little bursts and then it's real subtle. And, you know, if you look at a, a, a minnow or a bluegill that's just sitting there, a lot of times the body is stable, but just those tiny little fins are, are moving. And if you look at a crawdad as it, as it moves, you know, they move very, very slow, yeah. right? Slower, like torturously slow that we could never make a cast 300 feet out there, 30 feet down and, and move a bait that slow, right? Mm -hmm. But 
the movements are so slow and micro and that sometimes just having that little bit of quiver, just that little bit of movement is a much more natural approach than having something that's just got big swim to it or big vibration to it, right? On the other hand, sometimes that big vibration or that big movement is the trigger or at least an attractant to it, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of bridges the gap to my next bait, all right? My number two crawdad imitator is not a crawdad at all. It's actually a beaver, all right? Another OSP bait, all right? This is not an OSP episode, by the way, but we're starting out that way. So the OSP doe live beaver. Now we talk about this bait a lot. In my opinion, if this is rigged on a free rig, this is the single most lifelike, most natural moving crawfish imitation period, right? That you can effectively fish relatively quick, right? Now, what's awesome about this bait is you see I've got kind of a, a well, this is like a sprayed grass color, right? Like a greenish crawl type color. And I've got this kind of like sandy color. This is ghost shrimp. Right? What's awesome about this bait is everywhere I have taken this bait is even if they're not feeding on cross, right? Like when I go to the Great Lakes, I bring 9 million of these in this ghost shrimp. It is the single greatest goby imitator on a free rig I've ever seen, even though it's swimming and acting like a crawfish. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, you know, if you guys live in the Great Lakes, you should own 9 million of these, right? If you don't, you should own 9 million of these, right? In some kind of crawdad color, a green pumpkin, a watermelon, a black and blue, whatever is working for you. So what is it about the doe live beaver that's so magical? So the way they built this thing is they built this thing, you can see they've got these really big appendages on it, right? And you see they just kind of flop over when it's not in the water. Well, what these are doing is as this bait is getting pulled down by the weight, this is having what's called a dolphin kick. So it's swimming like this in a, in a very dolphinish type motion. If you look at a crawdad when it scurries away, it has kind of that same dolphin type motion to it where it's kind of little short bursts, right? So they wanted to imitate that, so it's kind of that same motion. But then when the weight falls and there's no longer anything pulling this down, the bait switches to a horizontal fall and then falls now like a Senko would fall. Right? So if you look at a crawdad that's doing a couple of scurries, then it kind of falls horizontally. Right, A crawdad doesn't fall tail down or head down. When it's sinking down through the water, it sinks horizontally as it quivers. Right? And so that's why I said, you know, is a doe live crawl look more realistic than this? Yes. But when you see this thing move by a movement standard, nothing moves like this one. So if you guys are open to trying a free rig or maybe you're throwing a free rig now and you're just looking to expand the baits, I think most of the people that are gonna watch this episode are on this train already, right? But you have to have this bait in your arsenal. I don't know anybody in my circle that doesn't use this thing, which is a pretty powerful thing, right? It's like everybody uses a mag draft, everybody uses a skinny dipper, right? Everybody uses a 110, everybody uses a Dolive beaver. Like it's just, a staple, right? So definitely a go-to. 3.5 inch for me is the go-to for free rig. Four inch is great if you're going for a little bit bigger size, heavier line, maybe more like Bubba Shot type sizing. And then of course the three inch size is more for me, it's super finessey, more of a jig trail. So for me, I'm really keyed in on that three and a half and four inch size. Those are the key sizes. So there you go, the OSP Dolight Beaver. Now, if you want to mix it up a little bit, and try something very similar, but that's just a little bit different approach. Bottom Up makes a bait called the Bull's Hog. There's, so there's a Bull's Hog and there's a Bull's Hog Daddy. Now you can also free rig these and they have a very similar action to a Doe Live Beaver. In fact, they're gonna look very similar. But see, this guy's got more of a crawdad look to it than this guy. So this is the Bull's Hog Daddy. Okay, which is the one I usually throw. So it's 3.6 inches. So just a little bit longer than a Dole Live uh, Beaver. Of course, the Bull's Hog is three inches, so you could go either way. But what's different about these is these guys have this kind of grooved appendage on the side. So instead of these claws going up and down like this, they go in and out. Does that make sense? So it's not gonna have this like paddle kick. It's gonna have this more like 
swimming horizontal kick. So it's just a different look, right? Mm -hmm. It offers them something different. Free rig is absolutely the way I would recommend throwing this to start. But another great way that we have figured out how to use this is you can neko rig this thing and it's pretty special. This particular bait, the bull's hog and the bull's hog daddy on a neko rig, if you rig it properly, you can create this special vibration. So what I use for this is I'll use uh, an OSP scrum hook, like either a one aught or a two aught, okay? And then I'll use some kind of nail weight. I usually go with the heaviest one. It's like a three gram, a two gram, a three gram, something relatively heavy. Let me show you what this thing looks like. Yeah, this is a cool little rigging that not a lot of guys utilize, right? But when you're all done, this is basically how it is going to look, right? So you've got the nail weight there in the bottom, you've got your scrum hook. So you've got basically this weedless rigging on this bait, all right? And what you can do with this is now, as you pull it, this thing is going to vibrate almost like a, like a subtle jackhammer in a way. It's got this kick, just right? And then when you kill it, it just kind of falls naturally like a crawdad and then and it falls naturally like a crawdad. Now, I've seen guys, you know, as we've been experimenting with this, I've seen guys just kind of burning it on the surface and you can almost just fish it like a wake bait and never stop it and they will eat it like that. I like it more on the bottom where I can just kind of sweep it and kind of pull it and I know it's got some movement to it and then kill it and let it go back down and then pull it. And it's kind of the same idea as a crawdad, you know, kind of scurrying and then kind of falling back down, right? Scurrying, short bursts, and then down. You'd never really see a crawdad just swimming forever, like all the way down the point, right? It's <laughs> it's short little burst, right? So they have this short little tail kick and then they fall down. And you can really get a an amazing action that nobody else is gonna be getting out of their baits, rigging it like this. So it might be something that's worth trying for you guys. I, I definitely would add it to the arsenal this time of the year if they're feeding on craws. Staying on bottom up for a minute, the number four craw bait is actually a shrimp bait. So we talk about shrimp baits a lot because in Japan, shrimp is a kind of a staple of uh, a bass's food source, right? So they don't have near as many crawdads or any crawdads, most places, it's all shrimp based, right? Mm. And a lot of shrimp baits, like if you look at an OSP Dole Life shrimp or something like that, they're designed to have kind of a tighter, you know, shrimpier movement, which a lot of times can imitate a crawdad because they have kind of that same kind of shellfish kind of scurrying away. This is kind of a special shrimp, and which is why it's making the list. And this is one of those where if you're willing to fish slow and methodical, you can catch fish on this that you couldn't catch anywhere else. Louise, I know you've been smoking them on the hurry shrimp. Oh yeah. Do you find that like you're fishing it slow and methodical, do you think you're getting bit on this when they wouldn't eat anything else? Yeah, it's definitely one of my go-tos like for when it gets tough. Yeah. yeah. So what this guy does is there's a million different ways you can rig this thing, right? So you can free rig it, you can Texas rig it, you can put it on a jig trailer, blah, blah, blah. Right? But one of the special ways to rig this thing is it can rig as a back glide, right? So here's a look at the bait. So you can see it's kind of a crawdad-ish type look, right? It's kind of like a shrimp craw hybrid baby, right? But if you rig this on a back glide, you can see how segmented that tail is. A, it will back glide, but B, when you pull it, it literally crawls forward, just like a crawdad would. So you can crawl it very naturally forward and then you can kind of pull it up and then it will glide back down. So it gives just a tremendous, really lifelike look on the bottom. Now, this is patience fishing that I don't have all the time, right? But if you know that they're in this little tiny area and you're just trying to pick it apart and milk everything you can out of a spot, this can be a great bait to throw because nothing else really looks like this. And nobody else is gonna have the patience to present it the way it needs to be presented. So let me rig it real quick. And I'll show you guys how simple this is. So a one out or two out hook is good. I'm a big fan of these Ryugi Infinis, but whatever you like. I like the Infini because it's a light wire hook. It just, it holds them very well. I use this same hook, by the way, for the beaver, for the stick. So a two on infinity is gonna have a lot of life in your, in your box, right? So very simply, I'm just gonna rig this guy 
kind of backwards. All right, so I'm going to go in just under the head. And then I'm going to put this right through that back section there. All right? And so there you go. So it's kind of in a back glide mode. So as I cast it, it's going to pull it away from me. But then as I crawl it, it's going to literally crawl it perfectly up through the rocks. And it just has such a lifelike look. It's just a great natural way to get them to bite. This is not a presentation that you're going to be like, okay, let's cover this mile of shoreline. <laughs> no it would way. take you a month. This is like a five inch Senko fisherman's wet dream right here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you like a Senko, you're going to love this thing. This is like, okay, there's a specific rock or a very specific rock pile or one point or one little bend of a, a creek. Like this is a very specific pick apart type bait. But it's a great one. It's one that not many people are going to use. So that is the curry shrimp. And again, it's available in a four inch size and a three inch size. So you can get super finesse with it. You could go a little bit bigger if you want. So there you go. There is number four on my list. All right. And finally, number five on my list is the most lifelike looking crawl of the bunch. And this is the Nico crawl. Now, typically, I stay away from craws that uh, are super, super lifelike. And I would say, not just craws, I stay away from things that are super, super lifelike. Because I, to me, it's the most important triggering thing, I think, in a bait is obviously the way it's presented, right? The cast, the angle. But I think it's, I'm looking for something that's gonna trigger a reaction out of a fish. And generally speaking, that's movement more so than, you know, exact replication, if that makes sense. But the reason why this goes onto my list is I know that there are a lot of people in this world that Ned rig, mm -hmm. okay? This is not something that I enjoy doing. And luckily for me, I don't have to do, <laughs> right? But there are a lot of places where the Ned rig just smokes them. And people are always looking for a different Ned rig option, right? And this can make a great Ned rig option. It's designed as a Ned rig bait. It is built out of like an elastomer type of plastic. So similar to, you know, like a Z-Man type plastic where it's going to be very durable, right? It's going to have a float to it, but unlike an elastic, right? That really is like a bobber. It's like a cork. Like it just boom, stands right up. This elastomer is a little bit more neutrally buoyant. So it's still going to have a float, but it's not going to be like doing, right? It's going to have more of that kind of neutral buoyancy and still kind of moves and has a little bit more of a lifelike look to it. Now, if you want to use a bait like this, but don't want an edrig, you guys put it on a football head, right? So this would allow you to fish it a little bit quicker. It's basically just a Ned. Yeah, Anyways, let's get real. It's just a jig head soft plastic, right? But it's just a great way to present something that's super, super lifelike on a Ned head that would just break up the monotony of throwing just a TRD or just a, a little straight bait, something that's a little bit different. And again, there's some great colors to it. It's got a lot of durability. It's got flavor and scent to it. And it gives you an option to have something in the water that's not just super corky right? It's going to be a little bit more natural as it moves. So that is the Nico Crawl. Check it out. All right, guys, that is a wrap. Those are five crawfish imitation soft plastic baits that I think everybody should have in their lineup. They are in mine. I'm using them all the time. I think you guys will catch a lot of fish if you try some of those out. If you have questions on anything that we covered, drop it down below. I will definitely get to it. CJ will leave links to the products as well. So if you want to check them out and add them to your arsenal, you certainly can. Until next time, guys, on behalf of myself and CJ and everybody here, thank you guys for the time. Thank you for the business. Have fun fishing. I hope you jack a ton of big ones on that. We will see you on the next one. Peace out. See you, CJ.